love music? I can assume your answer would be along the lines of, well, because it's something catchy to listen to. However, music is not just something to listen to. Music is feeling. Music can change feelings. Music can touch your soul. I personally feel physically incapable of doing any homework without singing along to music. A blessing for me, a bit of a curse for the rest of my family. That aside, music has this strange power to move you and truly make an impact on your thoughts and feelings. With this capability, music also has the power to change how you were previously thinking and feeling within a matter of seconds. This makes music an incredible outlet through hard times. I know this for a fact, because I've used music to help with all the difficulties in my life, and I've had quite a few. My name is Chelsea Nolan. My life has been shaped by music, and these are a few chapters of my story. So, I grew up in a house my parents rented in Oshawa and lived what I thought was a mostly normal life, except for one thing. You see, I never knew what it was like to play soccer with my dad or to go to take your kid to work day with my parents. Actually, I never got to see my dad walk up the stairs at night to go to bed. A few years before I was born, my dad was diagnosed with a condition known as emphysema. Emphysema is a lung condition in which the alveoli, or the air sacs of the lungs, become enlarged and damaged, causing breathlessness. Emphysema runs on my dad's side of the family, which doesn't help considering he worked with fiberglass insulation for decades and smoked during his younger years. My family was and still is on disability, meaning that the government gives my family an income because my dad was and still is unable to work. The house that we lived in was not of proper living conditions for my father. There was black mold in the basement, which was deteriorating my dad's lungs even more. Not only that, but my parents could barely afford to sustain our family due to their low income and increasing bills and health costs. The house was literally falling apart. I specifically remember the night when the ceiling fell in on my parents. I heard a cry from my mom, which woke me up, but I didn't think much about it, and I just went back to bed. I woke up that next morning to see plaster all over my mom's room. And the first thought that came to mind was, wow, my parents are redecorating? Overall, we needed to get out of there, but my parents couldn't afford anywhere else to go. My parents were afraid we'd end up on the streets. This is where music becomes our saving grace. Through tough times, my family and I have always relied on music. We've always been a musical family because it's the sole thing that's always brought us together. We'd spend nights in the living room singing as my brother and my dad would play guitar. The second my dad picked up the guitar, he had a passion that would impact my family forever. He'd buy guitars, obviously they weren't the best quality, they weren't bought to look good, but he'd lay them all around the house in hopes that at least one of his kids would be willing to learn. His plan worked, because now every single one of his kids know how to play at least one instrument. My brother, for example, nothing short of a prodigy as a kid, he could play any Van Halen song imaginable at the age of 10. He now works at Long & McQuaid Music Studio, performs and records on his own time, and also does guitar tech for bands such as Headley and I, Mother Earth. My older sister is more of the shy type, but at home, Capri can never stop singing, and she's recently picked up the ukulele. My younger sister can play ukulele, guitar, a bit of piano, and she performs my original music with me around the GTA. Oh, and I should also mention that I sing, play guitar, ukulele, a bit of piano, and I've been writing music for five years now. Music is the one thing none of us can or do we ever want to give up on because it's the one thing that's kept us close, especially during this next turn of events. Now, back to my dad. My dad's health was deteriorating faster than the house we lived in. Even with the help of food banks, my parents could barely sustain our family. This especially worried my parents, who were running out of options. My family soon discovered that a Habitat for Humanity house was being built in our city. 
Habitat for Humanity is a nonprofit organization that builds affordable housing for those who are struggling financially. My parents signed up, hoping they'd get the call. If I'm being honest here, I never wanted to move. I lived in this house for seven years that I loved so much because it was the only home I knew. I couldn't bear the thought of having to leave it. But one night, I prayed, and I remember the exact words I said till this day. God, I don't want to move. But if it is what my family needs, please get us that house. I know, pretty mature for a seven-year-old, but I swear it happened. I woke up that same week one morning to my mom in tears, but this time she was happy. We were the chosen family for the Habitat home. It was all an incredible experience, and after a year filled of caring people and friends, we moved in. My parents signed up to help volunteer on the house, knowing they, not knowing they were going to get it, because they wanted to help support whoever deserved the house. So my parents came in every week, volunteering on their future home. Everyone was so welcoming, letting the rest of our family come onto the site while they were building, and I even got to lay a brick in my own house. So now I'd like to acknowledge the room we are in. The Embassy of the Kingdom of God donated food to the workers building my house, and Pastor Ford Quinlan came in every day to say a prayer before each build. He was truly a remarkable person. So I'd like to thank him and the church for the impact they've had on my life. Everything got better once we moved into the house. My parents were managing to pay the bills. I even happened to pick up the guitar as well. Little did I know this would be such an important aspect of my life. I started to create music which would help me get through so many difficulties. Music would be the one thing I'd rely on. And all these positive experiences inspired me to write more music. However, things took a turn for the worse when I was 11, even in our new home. Throughout the years, my dad was still battling emphysema and was deteriorating slowly. In winter of 2011, my dad caught pneumonia. If any of you have ever had pneumonia, you know just how severe it can be to someone who's completely healthy in the beginning. It can be fatal. This illness attacks the respiratory system, therefore my dad's health began to spiral downhill. Twelve years after being diagnosed with emphysema, my dad was finally put on the list for a lung transplant. However, my family was still worried. My dad now had to carry an oxygen tank with him wherever he went in order to stay alive, and he had this huge 50-foot tube attached to a machine wherever he walked in the house. Even with the oxygen to help him, he was helpless. He couldn't even get out of the bed for Christmas. I started to realize my dad could die. The scariest night of my life has to be when my entire family was surrounded my dad in tears as he struggled to take another breath and he refused to call 911 because he didn't think they could help him. He couldn't lift a finger because he was suffocating. I was forced to go to my room, crying, praying I would still have a dad by the time I woke up the next morning. Be aware this is hard for anyone at any age to take in, never mind someone as young as 11 years old. Luckily, he made it through the night. Three weeks after my dad was put on the list for a lung transplant, I was losing hope. Most patients wait up to three years after being put on the list for a transplant, and my dad needed one that week. But one night, I prayed and I begged God to give my dad a lung transplant the next day because I knew he wouldn't survive another. 
Just keep him alive. I remember hearing this simple yet reassuring thing in my head I never recognized before. Okay. Music would help me through these times of trouble. It was my way of coping and believing in the power of something good. I woke up the next morning to my brother shaking me. This is when we found out the most miraculous news. My dad was having a lung transplant. We drove to Toronto hoping that it was true. It isn't uncommon to go all the way to Toronto to the hospital to just be told it was all a false alarm. But by some miracle, it was all true. There were no false alarms, and my dad had his lung transplant. Not only was it a lung transplant, but a double lung transplant, which is extremely rare. Now, my dad can breathe and do all the things he's always loved to do. He's always been one to invent and create, and he's been working on projects nonstop, his latest being these unique spaceship rides that we drive around Oshawa. Now, everything's better. Sure, medication does take its toll because there's a multitude of side effects. But my dad has always told me, I've never felt better because now I can breathe. My family has had struggles and troubles in our lives, but we have used music and our faith to strengthen us. Music gave us purpose as well as positivity. To write gives you an outlet to say all the thoughts you'd never normally say out loud. To sing, play an instrument, or even just listen to music can change your mood in seconds. Music can do that to you. So this is my advice to you. Take music and use it as an outlet through hard times. Use this as a tool to create comfort for yourself and change your mindset. And if it isn't music, find something that you love and something that you can share with your loved ones, as I've been blessed to share music with my family. Life has difficulties. It's inevitable. But what we can change is how we react to the situations we are faced with on a day-to-day -day basis. Music has the power to change my life. And I hope I can use that power to help change the lives of others. Thank you. Now, I'd like to sing a song that I wrote a long time ago, one of the first ones with my sister.
Keep on, keep on trying. It'll be all.